So what exactly is electronegativity? Well, electronegativity is usually defined as the ability of atoms to attract electrons. In other words, how likely is it that the protons found in the nucleus will attract our electrons in the atom? So we know as electronegativity increases, according to our definition, the atom's ability to attract electrons also increases. And generally speaking, according to our periodic trends, as we go up a group or across a period from left to right on our periodic table, the electronegativity of the atoms increases. In other words, their ability to attract electrons increases. So for example, let's take the second period. As we go from lithium to beryllium all the way to fluorine, the electronegativity of these atoms increases. And in fact, fluorine and oxygen are the two most electronegative atoms found on our periodic table. So we just defined what electronegativity is. But where does it come from? What determines electronegativity? Well, it turns out another important principle known as effective nuclear charge determines or creates electronegativity. Now, effective nuclear charge is simply the charge that the valence electrons found in the outermost shell feel due to the protons found in the nucleus. Remember, electrons and protons attract one another. Now, normally, the effective nuclear charge is smaller than the actual nuclear charge found in the nucleus. And that's because some of the electrons found in the innermost shell shield the charge. They decrease the charge, creating a shielding effect. So, in other words, the more valence electrons we have, the more our nuclear charge is, effective nuclear charge. The more innermost electrons we have in the innermost shell, the smaller our effective nuclear charge. So, once again, electronegativity arises from effective nuclear charge. The more valence electrons an atom has, the larger the effective nuclear charge is, the more electronegative the atom. And that's exactly why electronegativity increases as we go from lithium to fluorine. Because the number of valence electrons found in each atom increases as we go from left to right on our periodic table. Also, the ratio of valence electrons to the innermost electrons also increases. So let's take lithium, for example, and let's compare it to fluorine. So lithium has one valence electron in the 2s shell, while this fluorine has seven valence electrons. So because this has more valence electrons, and because the ratio is 7 to 2 versus 1 to 2, because the ratio here is much larger, this has much more effective nuclear charge, and therefore it's more electronegative. So, electronegativity and polar bonds go hand in hand. In fact, polar bonds or polar covalent bonds are formed because of differences in electronegativity. Once again, polar bonds are created due to electronegativity differences between the atoms composing the bond. So as an example, let's look at HF. So H donates one electron, and the fluorine also donates one electron. But because this fluorine atom is more electronegative, it attracts electrons more strongly. That means that electron density will be closer. The electrons will be closer to our fluorine. And so the fluorine will develop a partial negative charge while this H will develop a partial positive charge. The electrons will not be shared equally. They're going to be closer to the fluorine. So if we examine the molecular orbital of this bond, we see that the 1s orbital combines or overlaps with the sp3 orbital of the fluorine, forming this hybridized or this molecular orbital. And the electrons found in this molecular orbital will be closer to the fluorine nucleus than the H nucleus. And once again, that's why we have a partial negative on the fluorine and a partial positive on the H. So, recall that Bronsted-Lowry acids are compounds that donate an H ion. 
So for example, this hydrofluoric acid is a bronsted Lowry acid because it has an H that it can donate. So what determines if a compound is a good bronsted Lowry acid? So good bronsted Lowry acids have very polar bonds, which means that the H atoms are held very weakly and therefore are donated very readily. So this polar bond is very polar and that's because we have a very electronegative atom and not so electronegative atom. So there's a large difference in electronegativity creating a very polar bond. And so the bond will be weak. This H will be held very weakly because most of the electrons will be closer to the fluorine. And so it will readily dissociate in water to produce an H ion with a plus one charge and an F ion with a minus one charge.